Okay, let's now talk about what's called the geometric mean. This um, type of measure of central tendency, if you will, is best used when you have, let's say, money growing. When you're talking about rates of return on money, uh, interest rates, growth rates, uh, and you want an average rate after a certain number of years. Um, let's also compare that geometric mean to the other three measures that we looked at, the mean, median, and mode, and see which one is best when. Okay, so talking more about the geometric mean for starters, uh, it's commonly used to calculate rates of returns on investments, or if you will, the average rate of return after you have uh, rates of returns over several years. Um, so let's say you have your money growing over time. Um, you want to uh, find a rate of change of that growth over time. So how is that money truly growing? It's going to increase, decrease, increase, decrease. It's going to do lots of ups and downs. What is the true rate of return uh, over that whole time period? Well, the geometric mean is the best way to measure that. Okay, um, here is the formula for it. It looks quite complicated. It's not too bad, especially there's a, a great Excel call for it. Um, so here it is, 1 plus R1, 1 plus R2, 1 plus Rn. What do those mean? These R1 through Rn are the rates of return. For example, if this is money, the rate of return of your money uh, or your investment uh, for each time period. So you take each of those rates, add one to it, and then times that sum by 1 plus um, all of the uh, other rates for all of the other periods. You do that for all of the time periods. Put that whole thing to the power of 1 over n, where n is your total number of time periods, minus 1 from it. If this looks scary, though, there is an Excel call to do this. Let's have a look at it. So you do the same. You need to add 1 to each of the rates in Excel. And we'll look at that in Excel in a minute. And then once you've done that, you also need to go and subtract 1 at the end. So let's put a note. Okay, and there we go. And you're going to minus a 1 from your geomean call at the end, just like you do here. Um, okay, and either is great, either to do the geomean or to use the formula here, whichever one you prefer. Let's look at an example. Let's say we started with $100,000. It dropped in value to 50000 in the first year, and then it grew back to 100000 again. So we're a little relieved at the end of our second year of this investment. We're back to where we started. But how much is that really as a rate of return? So see if you can answer that. How much did our money grow by between the two years? Well, in the first year, it actually dropped by 50%. In the second year, it actually grew by 100% because it doubled again to be come back to the 100,000. That's actually an average rate of return of 0%. Now, let's look at this. If we were to put these rates of return into the average formula, the standard arithmetic average formula, or arithmetic mean, if you will, we put them in where this minus 0.5 really means the minus 50%, the 1 means the 100% growth. Note that I put um, my percentages as decimals all the time when I'm doing them in formulas or using them in formulas. Um, divide by 2 because there are two rates of growth that we're talking about, or two data values if you will, or two periods. Um, that turns out to be a 25% rate of growth. Is that really how much our money grew by over the two years? No. Um, geometric mean then is much more appropriate when we're talking about a rates of return over time or growth rates. Um, so here when we put in the negative 0.5 and the 1 into our formula here, we put them in for our rates. We add 1 to each. Uh, that becomes 0.5 and 2 times those two together. 0.5 times 2 gives us 1 to the power of 1 half just gives us 1. So that actually gives us 1 minus 1, which is 0. This is our true rate of return over the two years. We actually did not have our money grow by any amount. It just went back to where it started. It went back to the 100,000 that we started with. Um, let's have a look at this in Excel. Um, so let's try this um, example in Excel. OK, so let's say we have the 100,000. Um, it grow, or sorry, it drops by 50% to 50,000 in the first year, and then it grows again back to the 100,000 in the second year. If we were just to look at uh, these two and average them, let's have a look at that, um, then we would find our mean. But let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go and add in all of these other changes right here. Okay, um, so 
let's see, first of all, what we need to do is add one to our rate. So one plus each of our rates. So in Excel, we take our percent change here, or our rate of change, and we add one to it. Let's just carry that all the way down. So take your growth rate, add one to it. If you're wondering too how to get the growth rate, take your um, new value in A3 minus your old value in A2, divide by A2, that gives you a percent change. I don't know if you remember that back from your business stats class, it's your new minus your old divided by your old gives you percent change. In this case, um, that's A3 minus A2 for our first percent change divided by A2. And once you've done that once, you can just copy it down here. And then add one to each of those percent changes. Um, and then uh, we're now ready to get our mean. Now, let's try this out. Let's just average out our rates of return here, like we did here. So the average of these first two gives you that 25%. Uh, and to get the geometric mean of those first two, we take the modified ones, the one plus the rates, do a geo mean on those, just like you do in the formula, you do one plus each of the rates, and then afterwards you minus one. So we do geo mean of those modified rates minus one after we're finished the geo mean call. And again, that growth is 0%. So that matches what we calculated here. But let's make this example a little bit more interesting. Let's just expand our range here to, to allow for all of these percent changes. Okay, so let's switch our range here to um, all the way down to C11. So overall average rate of return, if we just used um, an equals average call, would be 9%. Um, if we use the geometric mean call, we actually um, have dropped in value down to uh, by 17%. Now, the 17% isn't actually how much we um, dropped in value from the start to the end. It's actually much, much larger of a drop than that. To go from 100,000 down to 18,000, again, we could do that um, uh, overall, so percent change. We could do that same new uh, um, minus old divided by old formula for it. Um, the overall percent change is actually much larger of a drop than that. It is, oh, and let's format that to a percentage. Okay, it's actually an 82% drop in our money. What this geometric mean actually tells us, this here is actually the uh, per percent change per year or the annual percent change, if you will. Um, so this is how much our money drops by each year on average. So this is the yearly average. If you wanted the overall change, it's actually 82% drop in your money over the full number of time periods here, which is 10 time periods or 10 years, if you will. Let's have a look at one last slide in this part of the lecture, um, the measures of central tenancy summary here. Okay. Very first measure for central tenancy, the mean. Here's the formula. Uh, if there aren't many extreme values in your data set, um, then the mean is a great measure of central tenancy. If there are, however, extreme values, some outliers, for example, some very large values, some very small values, or perhaps not outliers, but just very large, very small values, the median is actually a more accurate measure of the middle point of the data. Um, and uh, if you were to guess a value for any future data uh, in that data set, the median would be more accurate if there are some large um, variances in the data where there's some very large values or some very small values. Um, and again, it's that middle value. Um, and the mode is just not often used. It's a great quick measure. It's useful when you have categorical data. We'll look at that later. Um, you can look at the modal class, um, the class that occurs the most often. Um, but for now, we won't really use the mode much. Apart from this first lecture, I'll have you try doing some modes. Um, and just to recap how to do these in Excel, the mean, you just do an equals average call in Excel. The median, you do an equals median call in Excel. The mode, you do an equals mode call in Excel. And then finally, there's the geometric mean. Uh, that is very useful when you have rates of return or growth rates. 
A uh, very common example, again, is on money or investments or, um, yeah, any sort of growth of money where you have rates of return on that money and you want an overall average yearly rate of return. Um, you want to use a geometric mean and not just a regular mean or an arithmetic mean. Uh, and again, the geometric mean, uh, here is the formula for it. Or in Excel, what you need to do is you need to add one to each rate and then take the geomean of those modified uh, rates or those sums, if you will, and then subtract one um, from that geomean at the end to get your geometric mean. Um, okay, that concludes uh, looking at measures of central tendency.